In this session we're going to look at using the for do loop or the fixed iteration. I've put a button on stage and I've gone through and actually changed the text to blue. To do that I've gone into custom colors and actually selected the blue out and also I've changed the font size and style by just going through and adjusting those just to give a bit of diversity from previous tutorials. So the code's going to be associated with this button. So let's go into it. The first thing I do is put in some developer comments. I'm just going to put www.lmarsden.com. Um, this is going to be looking at fixed iteration, which is the for do loop. Now, it's fixed iteration because it's going to do it for a duration of time. So it'll be 1 to 5, 1 to 50. It's normally specified by the developer or the, the end user, but it will do it for a a set number of times so that's what we're aiming to do so the very first thing we want to do is set up the structure of for do loop so we can go for i equals one two five and then we have next now we can actually specify what is next so we can actually say next i so it knows to go back to this for do loop and stay within here and that way we can also make sure if we've got nested loops we know which one we're working with and what we want to do is just output a random number. So I'm just going to use the debug dot right line. And then I want to output a random number there. So I'm going to use the math module ceiling, the R and D bracket bracket times six. So we'll just do dice rolls for this. Um, we need to initialize, and I haven't done that yet, so we need to initialize, which means we're going to run the randomize function. Also we need to declare some also we need to declare some um, variables and in this case here we need to declare i. Now the reason why we use i is i is an index and normally whenever you use i as a variable name it's always going to be a counter and it's a throwaway counter so it's never going to hold really important data and it can be recycled across a number of actions so that is one of our indexes so this program now should output in our debug window five random numbers so let's run this so we hit start and there's our five random numbers one two three four five now we can actually see that it is putting out five random numbers because I can actually change the right line statement to also output I and then use the concatenation so such as the end quote and that will now put I so the first time through I equals one two five so first time through it is one and it'll output the first random number, so one and the random number. The second time through, it should give us another random number, etc. And we should now should see one, two, three, four, five in our output. There we go, one, two, three, four, five. So I is incrementing up by one, and the random number is appearing on the right hand side. Now we can't actually see that it's going up by one, we just know it is, but there is actually what's called a step. And we can step it up by one and that will produce the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or we can actually go 1 to 10 and step up by 2 so the first time through it will be 1 and then it will add 2 to i so rather than being 1, the next one will be 3 and it will keep going until it gets to 10 so let's run the program now so you can see 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 and when it adds 2 to 9 becomes 11, because 11 is greater than 10, the for do loop finishes. So if we wanted to see all the even numbers between 1 and 50, or say 0 and 50, we can go 0 and 50. So I'll give us 0, then it should give us add 2 to 0 will be 2, then it should go to 4 by the step. Now when we run the program now, we have all the even numbers between... 0 and 50 appearing in our output window and with every roll we've actually got a dice roll with that at the moment we can also get the program to step backwards so this is stepping up by 2 so it goes 1 2 so it steps up by 2 
We can step up by four, five, ten, whatever we want to. We can also go backwards. So we can get an account from 50 back to one. And we can step by negative one. So every time we go through the loop, we reduce it by one. So we start at 50, we keep going until we get to one. And every time we go through the loop, we remove one from that. So we should see 50 to one with a random number next to it. And here you can see it running 20 all the way down. And if I scroll up, you'll see the rest of the numbers appearing. So you can see that they're all appearing there. So that's how we can do backwards. Now we can also put in there, and this is a condition to get out of a loop. So normally you, a loop would go for the whole duration, but we can actually say if I equals 27, then we can do something. Well, what do we want to do? Well, we actually want to break out of this loop. So we're going to go exit. And what do we want to exit? We want to exit the for loop. So if I is equal to 27, so it's going to start at 50, 49, 48, da, 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 da. then it'll get to 28. And when it gets to 27, it'll display 27, and then it'll exit the loop so we won't see 26, etc. So let's have a look at this. So we get to 27, it's displayed 27, and then it's stopped. It's exited the for do loop. So it's terminated the loop before it completed its cycles all the way through. So you can have conditions with inside a loop to exit a loop. So that's useful to note. So we can terminate it under special conditions. But the idea of a for do loop is that we do it for a fixed amount of time. If the loop is only meant to happen for a condition, while x is greater than y and things like that, then we should look at using either a pretest loop, which is a while do, or a post test loop, which is a do until. And we can look at those in another tutorial. So I'm just going to rem out the if statement at the moment because we're not going to use that for a little bit. And that's the major structure of our for do loop. Now, just to expand this, what we're going to do is just declare some other integers. So I'm going to dim, I start. I stop and also I step as integers. And then in our initialize, we can actually set I star is equal to one. I stop is equal to 50. And we have I step equal to one. So we can now change i is equal to i start. Then we can have to i stop. And then we can have i step. So we could now ask the user to give us the start, stop, and step. So we can go i start is equal to input box. Then we can ask for the stop. So now I can actually ask the user what number they'd like to start at, what number they'd like to stop at, and also what amount do they want to step up by. So let's have a look at the program now. So I click start. What number do I want to start at? 20. What number do I want to stop at? 30. And what number do I want to go up by? I want to go up by 1. And in our output, we have 20 to 30, all stepping up by 1. I could start at 21, I could run to 200, and I could step up in sevens. And the output now starts at 21, then 28, so it does the seven times tables, all the way up to around 200, where it stops at 196 with three, and then it terminates. So if we want to step down negatively, we could start at 30, stop at 20, and step down by negative one. And therefore, 
we go from 30 all the way down to 20 in minus one amounts. So this is a good way that the user can control a for do loop. You can see that we've got the start, the stop, and the step. And if we wanted to, we can put special conditions in to terminate with an exit for do command to break us out of this loop if needed. So I hope you found this tutorial useful and you'll be able to apply it to your programming to make dynamic applications.